hello and welcome back to data news of the week that's right the video where we wrap up all of the news stories involving data throughout the week that i can't possibly squeeze into other videos and let's face it this week has been exceedingly ps5 heavy ever since the announcement went out because of the beta and people being able to upgrade their storage i'm not going to talk about it in this video but i will say that it's been an enormous feature of this week in terms of videos i'm going to i'm going to continue to touch on it next week but very very likely we're going to talk a lot more about now next week and of course SSDs in general but in the news this week of course there has been Thunderbolt 5. For those that aren't aware Thunderbolt 5 was accidentally leaked by Gregory Bryant. Um, it was featured and largely exposed by Anantech uh, in a tweet that was very very quickly deleted but let's face it this is the internet and fat chance getting rid of that and ultimately Thunderbolt 5 has now been leaked out there. It is going to be a USB-C interface connection and unlike Thunderbolt 4 which has been around for barely a year and a lot of people were kind of like Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3, both of them 40 gigabits per second. Yeah, I'll wait out if that's okay. Thunderbolt 5 looks like it's going to be 80 gigabits per second. That is 8 gigabyte per second connectivity that's going to open up Thunderbolt over PCIe 4 and of course innovations in USB are also going to be rolled into that so again really looking forward to seeing Thunderbolt 5 become more mainstream because I think it would be fair to say Thunderbolt 4 hasn't exactly hit the ground running next up the Seagate Firecuda 530 the very first review is out there of course it was Tweak Town they always do an incredible job when it comes to SSD coverage and performance testing and they have pretty much given it gold stars through out on the tweak town performance review there in the crystal disc benchmark there we saw them reaching 7460 megabytes per second sequential read and 6102 sequential write so again incredible performance there of the 1tb model there with them stating that if they, when they get their hands on the 2 and the 4 they fully expect it to go higher they've even given it a stamp of 99% in their review which I know for you UK 90s gamers that sounds incredibly retro throwback as a review system but I personally love it they give it 99% which again you compare that against the 98% they gave Samsung's 980 Pro earlier this year and the 100% they gave the WD SN850 November of last year so again it's an ever changing thing and although some of their test benchmarks and things like Anvil and Disk Bench did put the WD and the Samsung ahead of this drive they're hoping that when we look at the 2 and the 4 TB drives the things are going to level out quite dramatically but again it's great to see the reviews out there and of course my own review on that drive should hopefully be out within the next two weeks but again fair play for Tweaktown that massive giant in this industry of SSD reviews and stuff like that getting theirs out and pretty much laying a very straight dice game on that review. Next up, we've got a Google-based story, and to be perfectly frank with you, even though this is a new story from this week, it actually harked back to 2019 in a Google data center in Oklahoma. Google are trying to recycle hard drives more effectively. For those that aren't aware, hard drives generally when they're used in bulk, maybe at data centers, hard drives are generally just completely trash because of the data that's on them and the platters inside and it's an incredibly complex thing to take them apart and google have kind of taken the challenge here and started going through and by hand at this data center they've been removing large numbers of one of the most important parts this magnetic assembly the bit that controls the arm the actuator they went through 6100 drives recycling and removing those magnetic assembly parts and then getting them sent over to manufacturing plants in thailand where these have been reintroduced it's one of the most key components of a hard drive but it's also one of the most intrinsic element based components in the construction of a hard drives uh, in hard drives and although ssds are becoming more and more widespread it's never really going to challenge the large archival size of hard drives so google trying to challenge um, how we you know utilize hard drives long term in terms of sustainability is going to be really really interesting given that data centers generally get through about 22 million hard drives a year and that's when they have to swap them out when they reach what they can consider um, ideal right replacement age of between three to five years in rotation or 
age out. I really do think this is something we should have already been cracking on with a few years ago, but fair play to Google for really putting some man hours behind this. Finally, the last news story for this week's Data News of the Week is the National Data Bank. On a lot of websites and stuff have been thrown around as a data food bank. For those that aren't aware, um, Virgin O2 are working together with uh, the Good Things Foundation and trying to make it so that they can provide free data for people that just can't simply afford it. And by that I mean not people that are in areas that they can't get a decent data connection, but people that genuinely need data. We live in a data and internet-based society and they just can't afford to have connectivity. They've maybe got no mobile connectivity or can't afford local wired data connections via an ISP. This is the plan to provide these people with the free data that's kind of not being used by other people and other places. O2, Vir or Virgin O2 have donated 7.5 million gigabytes worth of data that equates to well over £500,000 worth of data connectivity. And this should hopefully allow via a system of applications people like students, those working from home that genuinely are just living paycheck to paycheck and even kids in schools that need data and need internet connectivity to get on with their schoolwork to have that level of access for absolutely no cost. And that's something I think as generally as a society as we move forward into a heavily, heavily, heavily based internet age that we can all get behind. But this has been Data News of the Week for the first week of August. Don't forget if you've enjoyed this or want to learn more or stay abreast of these things, click like and subscribe. But otherwise, I'll see you next time.